The World Cup is over, the greatest league returns, and a chance to win $50,000. Hey, what's going on everyone? Jason Mattis, of course, with Winning Bets, hanging out with you guys on this episode. On this episode, we get the return of the Premier League as the World Cup has obviously ended. Congratulations to Argentina. What an amazing, amazing final and just overall just a great tournament that we got. I know you guys enjoyed it just like I did. But again, we get the Premier League back. We know what that means. Over on the NBC Sports Predictor app, we can win $50,000 if you can correctly predict six matchups. you got to give them the right result and correct score to win that $50,000. If not, you can win $1,000 of guaranteed money. If you get the most points, it's 10 points right for that correct score and four points right if you get the result. All season long, I give away $25 to the winner of the Winning Bets League. If you need that league information, you can go ahead and grab it from this video description. I already paid out the winner from last time. I know it was well over a month ago, but we did go ahead and pay that out. So as always, though, everybody starts this week with zero points. So regardless of how you've been doing this season or if you're new to joining the Winning Bets League, you have the same opportunity to win just like everybody else. We all start off with zero points. So I want to go ahead and wish you guys good luck. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the matchups. This will be a very, very interesting couple of weeks. You've had a long time off. What happened, I said pre-World Cup is not necessarily going to you know carry over post world cup you also want to know player involvement and, or you know like player participation you've got guys returning from the world cup i mean guys that you know were involved in the uh, french and argentine teams hell they're still in paris and buenos aires you know celebrating you know making the final and celebrate winning the world cup so i would just say if you're really off this week it's going to be okay uh, maybe this is a lineup checker but we know how this game you know, goes where all the games lock when the first game locks. So you really, you know, I say you want to look at lineups, but you don't really get a, a true look at lineups before these games lock. So this one's going to be really tough, but we'll go ahead and jump into it. We'll see how we can do. It all kicks off here with Leicester versus Newcastle. And the story with this one's just going to be, is Newcastle going to be cooled off? This is one club that did not welcome the World Cup. They did not want the World Cup to come. They were surging top six of the Premier League, absolutely just gunning for that top four. And then you get the World Cup. But is that going to go ahead and cool them off? That's the big question mark. Leicester, they've turned around their season. Remember, earlier in the season, they were cashing both teams to score and over 2.5. But they kind of righted the ship there that last month or so in the Premier League, picking up wins, keeping clean sheets is what Leicester was doing. So, again, I think this entire week is going to be tough. I'm going to say 1-1 draw. Uh, hurt pains for me to say that because I like what Newcastle's doing. I'd like for them to keep collecting three points. I think they'll be a top four top six team when it's all said and done but again we just don't know what this world cup is going to do you know in terms of cooling off these teams but i'll go ahead and say one one draw there at the king power stadium next one we get here is aston villa taking on liverpool i'm assuming no martinez in goal and of course martinez is the argentine goalkeeper where again he's in buenos Aires celebrating as of yesterday they were doing the parade you know through the town through the capital and celebrating the world cup title so he is a goalkeeper so he doesn't need a lot of training right he's gonna be fit because he's been playing matches but does he get a rest like a mental rest i'm assuming he's getting at least a mental rest so i'm assuming no martinez in goal which is you know gonna be pretty big and then otherwise, yeah, I mean, Liverpool's the better team. They Sure, they've struggled all season long, but, I mean, they've got the better players. Um, a lot of their strikers, I would think, are going to be involved, right? Firmino wasn't on the Brazil national team. Salah, obviously, Egypt didn't even make the World Cup. Jota's probably still going to be injured. He missed the World Cup there through Portugal. And then Darwin Nunez with Uruguay. You know, they kind of bowed out early. They didn't make it out of the group stage. So you would think Darwin Nunez is more than likely going to participate. If I'm getting Salah, if I'm getting Nunez, and I'm getting Firmino, yeah, that's going to be enough for me on Liverpool. But I think it's kind of going to be like, a, you know, these guys got to like get back into the flow of it. And I think this entire week you're going to see low scoring matches. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of under 2.5 caches. I think Liverpool gets the win. I think they cash under 2.5. Go ahead and give me the Liverpool 1-0 win. Next one here is to the Emirates for Arsenal versus West Ham. And guys, I, I think we may have lost... Our Premier League title race during the World Cup. Do you guys see Gabriel Jesus picked up a knee injury while on duty with Brazil? That's a massive blow to Arsenal, losing Gabriel Jesus. That's their number nine, big-time summer signing. Just really, 
uh, is the reason why Arsenal is, you know, where they are in the standings. Gabriel Jesus has been everything that Arteta would have wanted. He's out for a few months. That's going to kill their, you know, firepower. Defensively, Arsenal was strong prior to that World Cup. We knew West Ham was struggling. Remember, West Ham's matches were only averaging 1.9 goals per match leading up to that World Cup. So they're not scoring. They're not really conceding. You take away Gabriel Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Snooze fest here at the Emirates. I'm going 0-0. Zero, zero. Give me a 0-0 zero, zero draw. Next one here is at Stanford Bridge between Chelsea and Bournemouth. I think Chelsea's going to have enough regardless. Although, if you want to give the edge to Bournemouth in this, I can't be too mad with you. This is going to be a team that didn't have a lot of their players go to the World Cup. They got a couple, you know, week break off before the World Cup. Then you saw all these clubs have their guys come back training. A lot of these teams did friendlies. Uh, Bournemouth may actually benefit from that. And, and if they knock off Chelsea here, I'm not going to be too surprised. Obviously, a lot of Chelsea players were involved in the World Cup. So what is their participation going to be back coming from this World Cup? We don't know what Graham Potter is going to do. This one's a bona fide lineup checker. You don't get that benefit, though, of being able to check lineups. So I'm going to assume Chelsea is going to have enough to go and put out a good enough lineup to get it done. Another low scoring. I, again, I think this one's just going to kind of be a low scoring week overall. I'm going 1-0. I'll say Chelsea gets it done, pulls it out, 1-0 win. All right, next one here is Manchester United versus Nottingham. Everybody knows this is my team, Manchester United. I mentioned these clubs doing a lot of friendlies. Uh, United did a little holiday training, whatever you want to call it. They went to Spain and they had a couple friendlies in Spain. Didn't necessarily go their way, but they got good work in in Spain. Here's the thing here for Nottingham, though. No Dean Henderson, right? This is the Manchester United loanee goalkeeper to Nottingham Forest. Well, when you loan a player, they don't participate against their parent club. United is his parent club. That's going to be a big blow. Nottingham, or Dean Henderson is, is outstanding. He may be the successor to De Gea, we, you know, to be determined, but he deserves to be. I mean, this was a guy that was on the England national team at the World Cup. Dean Henderson is a phenomenal goalkeeper. He's not going to be between the sticks, again, because he's uh, a low knee and, and unable to participate in this matchup. I think United's going to get it done, uh, quite frankly. They didn't have a lot of their guys in terms of offensive wide, really just Rafford, right? Martial wasn't involved in the World Cup. Anthony was there with Brazil, but I think it's enough time for him to come back and probably participate in this one. So I'm going to go United 2-0 win. I'm going to go United 2-0 win. Maybe that's a touch of a homer pick, but uh, they're better than Forrest. Forrest has is, is generally you know, been a mess. We've kind of talked about them uh, obviously a lot this season. A, a lot of new signings, but has not gelled at all. United's going to get it done. Give me a 2-0 win. Then the last one here is Leeds taking on Man City. We know this Leeds story, at least prior to the World Cup, right? Come out on fire, score goals in the first half, concede goals in the first half, but then kind of run out of steam in the second half and lose some matches there late in games. Man City, De Bruyne's back. They've already had some friendlies, and De Bruyne participated in those friendlies because obviously Belgium bowed out early. Holland was in those friendlies. He's recovered from his foot injuries. Heck, Holland and De Bruyne both scored a goal in that last last friendly. Man City is going to be clicking. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, they'll have some guys that maybe you'd like to see on the lineup checker, but nah, De Bruyne is in there. Holland's in there. Nah, that's enough for me. I'll go ahead and take Man City 3-0. Maybe Leeds can, can get a goal. I wouldn't be too surprised. I mean, that's just how they've kind of been this season, but we know City. Damn tough team. I'm going to go 3-0. Give me a 3-0 win for Man City. All right, guys, and that's how we're doing it this week here in the Premier League. Again, this could be a tricky week, so don't be down on yourself if maybe you don't quite have the amount of success you'd want. But the games are back, and each and every single week we'll have a video with picks, and we'll give a chance to win $50,000. As always, man, I wish you guys good luck on your picks, and we'll see you back here on the next one. That was a lot of fun. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and good luck with your picks. If interested in placing real sports bets, then check out my latest daily free sports betting video in the bottom right corner. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next contest.